Hello students, we will continue the problems on probability. So far we have completed 17 problems. Hope you have watched all the previous problems on probability. In the previous theory, uh, introduction to probability, I told you this probability chapter is little bit complicated because every problem will be a unique problem, different problem, not related with other problems. So even if you solve 1000 problems, 1001th problem may be different. So that is a peculiarity of this chapter probability. That's why students will feel it a little bit difficult. So anyway, whether you like it or not, it's a part of our subject business statistics. We must learn it and it's very interesting. So anyway, please watch the previous video so that you can uh, learn in rhythm. All of a sudden, if you watch the third part or fourth part, you cannot be able to understand properly. So from beginning, first part, second part, third part, like that, if you uh, watch the video, then definitely you will get a good command. You will find it more interesting, this topic, probability. Hope you have got the printout of all the problems from the link under my description. Keep the problems ready. And while watching the video, you must have on hand the printed copy of the problems. So now I'm going to start the next problem, 18th one. See the 18th problem. There are 17 balls numbered from 1 to 17 in a bag. A bag contains 17 balls. Each ball, one number is printed. If a person selects one ball at random, what is the probability that the number printed on the ball will be an even number greater than 9? So out of 17 balls, one ball we are picking. So any ball can come. So there are 17 equally likely, totally exhaustive and mutually exclusive outcomes. Totally exhaustive because we have maximum 17 balls. We don't have more than 17. Equally likely means every ball have, will have equal chance of being selected. And mutually exclusive means when one ball is selected, the other ball cannot be selected. That's why when we select one ball out of 17, there are 17 mutually exclusive, exhaustive and equally likely. So denominator will take 17. Now what is our requirement favorable cases? We want a number printed on the ball which should be an even number greater than 9. So greater than 9, even numbers means 10, 12, 14, 16. Maximum number of balls are 17 only. So the even numbers we want greater than 9. So 9 se bada hona or even number hona. So 9 se bada, even number 10. 10, 12, 14, 16. These are the four our favorable cases. So ultimate the answer will be 4 by 17 is the required probability. Now you see here. One ball out of 17 can be drawn in 17 ways. Probability that the number printed on the ball will be an even number greater than 9. Favorable cases are 10, 12, 14, 16. So four favorable cases. So required probability is 4 by 17. That's it. It's a very simple problem. Next problem, 19th. Now, see the 19th problem. If A, B and C are mutually exclusive and exhaustive events, find P of B. Probability of B, we have to find out. If one third of probability of C is equal to half of probability of A, is equal to probability of B. So ultimately we have to find out what is the probability of B event. One relationship is given between probability A, B and C. What is the relationship? We have to find out P of B if 1 by, uh, 1 by 3, 1 by 3 probability of C is equal to half of probability of A is equal to probability of B. And a B, probability of B is 1 by 2 P of A. And what is 1 by 3 P of C. Right? In other words, we can say P of B is equal to half of P of A and 1 by 3 of C is equal to half of C. equal to half of P of A and 1 by 3 of P of C. That's it. Now, see carefully. P of B we have to find out. Now, P of B is equal to 1 by 2 of P of A. It is given in the relationship. And P of B half A. Kiska half A? P of A ka. Or, or a condition here P of B is one third of P of C. This is the relationship given. Ultimately, finally, we have to find out what is the probability of B. Suppose, we will suppose, let the probability of B is equal to X. Let the P of B is equal to X. Unknown, so we are putting X. Now, P of B is equal to half of P of A. Relationship here, equation is given. 
P of B is equal to half of P of A. Now in place of P of B, I am writing X because I have supposed X. X is equal to half of P of A. Now, if we multiply 2 on both the sides, LHS and RHS, if we multiply by 2, this will become 2X. And 2 into half will be equal to 1. If we multiply this RHS with 2, 2, two divide by 2, 1. So 1 into P of A is P of A. So in other words, we can say 2X is equal to P of A. Again, I repeat, multiplying this by 2. अगर 2 से LHS और RHS को multiply करें तो ये x जाकर 2x हो जाएगा यहां 2 से multiply करें तो 2 into 1 by 2 is equal to 1 तो 1 into P of A is P of A तो 1 equation we got 2x is equal to P of A now P of B is equal to 1 third of P of C P of B is equal to 1 third of P of C तो in place of P of B I am writing x as usual is equal to 1 third of P of C now if we multiply 3 on both the sides, LHS and RHS, so 3 into x will become 3x, 3 into 1 by 3 will be equal to 1, 3 into 1 by 3 will be equal to 1, so 1 into P of C is P of C, so we got the equation 3x plus is 3x is equal to P of C, so we got 3 values, P of B is equal to x, then P of A is equal to 2x, P of C is equal to 3x, right, so total Total of probability will always be equal to 1. Always the total of the probabilities must be equal to 1. So we can write P of A. P of A is how much here? 2x. P of B. P of B we have supposed as x. P of C we got 3x. So 2x plus x plus 3x is equal to 1 because the total of the probabilities always must be equal to 1. So equation we want 2x plus x plus 3x, you will get 6x. So 6x is equal to 1, x is equal to 1 by 6. So what is x? What we have supposed P of B? x is nothing but P of B. So we got P of B is equal to x is equal to 1 by 6. One value we got P of B. Now P of A is equal to 2x. P of A is equal to 2x. So 2 into 1 by 6 is 2 by 6. So we got P of A 2 by 6. Now P of C. P of C is 3x. So 3 into 1 by 6 is 3 by 6. So ultimately the probabilities are P of A is 2 by 6. Or we can write it as 1 by 3. 2 1s are 2, 2 3s are 6. P of B. P of B is equal to 1 by 6. And P of C is equal to 3 by 6. 3 by 6 is equal to 1 by 2. That's all. It is asking you what is P of B. But we have calculated P of A, P of B, P of C. All the three we got it. So you can see this problem is entirely different. Completely different to problem. So after doing the problem, you can be able to understand the logic of the problem. Without understanding the steps, it will be very, very difficult to understand. Now, 20th problem. See the 20th problem. We will start the next problem, 20th. Problem number 20. A, B and C are bidding for a contract. It is believed that A has exactly half the chance that B has. A's probability of getting the contract is half of the probability of B. In turn, is 4 fifth as likely as C to win the contract? And this is equal to 4 fifth as likely as C to win the contract. What is the probability for each to win the contract? So three contractors are there, A, B, C. All the three are bidding for a contract. A, B, C are bidding for a contract. It is believed that A has exactly half the chance of B. A, probability of A is equal to half of B. And in turn is equal to four fifth as likely to win as C. What is the probability of each one? Just like the previous problem. We'll write the relationship of probability of A, B and C. Then easily we can understand. P of A is equal to half of P of B. It is given. Probability of A is half of the probability of B. Then P of B is equal to four fifth of P of C. It is given. Probability of B is four fifth of probability of C. Now C is equal to how much? So if we know the C, then we can be able to know the probability of B. Then after getting the probability of B, we can get the probability of A. Reverse way we go. Because 
A's probability depends on B, B's probability depends on C and C we don't know. So we will suppose, let the probability of C is X. Let the probability of C getting the contract is X. So we, are, we got P of C, probability of C is X. Now P of B is equal to 4 fifth of PC. So P of B is equal to 4 fifth of PC, probability of C. So 4 fifth of X, probability of C is X, we have supposed already. So 4 by 5 into X, so we can write P of B is equal to 4 by 5 X. So we got probability of C as X, probability of B as 4 by 5 into X. Now we are given probability of A is equal to half of probability of B. Probability of A is half of probability of B. So P of A is equal to 1 by 2 into what is the P of, P of B? Already we got 4 by 5 into X. So half of 4 by 5 X. So P of A is equal to 2 1s are 2, 2 2s are 4. It will become 2 by 5. If you cancel, 2 1s are 2, 2 2s are 4. So 2 by 5 X. So we got all the three. Probability of A is 2 by 5 X. Probability of B is 4 by 5 X. And probability of C is X. Now the total of the probability will always be equal to 1. So P of A plus P of B plus P of C. If you add up, you must get 1. So now we add up P of A. How much P of A? 2 by 5 X. 2x by 5, we can write. 2 by 5x or 2x by 5 means same. Plus P of B, P of B is 4x by 5. And P of C is x, so x by 1. Just I'm writing 1, doesn't matter. So we can take the LCM. If you take the LCM of these 3, 5. So 5 divides 5 one time, 1 into 2x, 2x. 5 divides 5 one time, 1 into 4x, 4x. 1 divide 5, 5 times. 5 into x, 5x. Five so take the total 2 plus 4 plus 5, it will be 11x. 2 plus 4 plus 5, it will be 11x divided by 5 is equal to 1. Now if I make a cross multiplication, 11x is equal to 5. 11x is equal to 5, x is equal to 5 by 11. x is equal to 5 by 11. So we got x. What is x here? P of c. Probability of c we got. P of C is equal to X is equal to 5 by 11. Now we can find out P of B. P of B is 4 by 5 into X. So 4 by 5 into 5 by 11. 5, 5 will get cancelled. 4 by 11. So we got P of B 4 by 11. Now P of A. Now P of A is equal to 2 by 5 X. So 2 by 5 into 5 by 11. 5, 5 will get cancelled. 2 by 11. All the three we got probability of getting the contract by A, B and C are A. P of A is 2 by 11 here. P of B is 4 by 11, this one, and P of C is 5 by 11, exactly similar to the previous problem. The only thing you have to remember, the conditions, the conditions are given. P of A is half of P of B, and P of B is 4 fifth of P of C, and P of C we don't have. So we suppose P of C, ek bar suppose kar liye P of C ko to reverse back, pahile P of C a jata, phir P of B a jata, phir P of A a jata. So P of C ko suppose kar diye X. So P of B is equal to 4 fifth of P of C. So 4 fifth into X. So 4 by 5 X. Take a look. P of A is equal to 1 by 2 into P of B. So 1 by 2 into P of B 4 by 5 X. So 2 1s are 2, 2 2s are 4, 2 by 5 X. So we got P of A, P of B, P of C. Total of the probability 1. Here you have to take the LCM. So 2 X by 5 plus 4 X by 5 plus X by 1. So if you take the LCM here, it will be 1. 5 divides 5 1 time, 1 into 2x, 2x. 5 divided by 5 1 time, 1 into 4x, 4x. 1 divides 5 5 times, 5 into x, 5x. So total 11x by 5. Cross multiply, 11x is equal to 5, x is equal to 5 by 11. Like this. So this is the end of problem number 20. Now 21. See the 21st problem. Two letters are drawn at random from the word home. Write down the sample space. First question we have to write down the sample space. Sample space is a set which contains all the values of that home. Then now find the probability that both letters are vowels. Probability that both the letters are vowels. First question. At least one is a vowel and one of the letters chosen is M. So three different questions are there. First question both the letters are vowels. Second, at least one is vowel, one of the letters chosen is M. That's it. 
Now see, two letters are drawn at random from the word home, sample space. H-O-M-E, four letter word. In this four letter word, we have to make a sample space, sample space of two two letters. So first we take H-O, one set. Then H-M, second. H-E, third. H-O, H-M, H-E. Then O-M, then O-E. O M O E last one M E so how many values one two three four five six so in the sample space we have six pairs of alphabets first question first question completed second probability that at least one is vowel minimum one is vowel vowels are A E I O U everybody knows it so these are the vowels now we have to see how many cases we have vowels how many cases we have vowels first case O is a vowel Second case, HM, there is no vowel. Then HE, E is vowel. OM, O is vowel. OE, O is vowel. ME, E is vowel. So out of the six values, only one value we don't have vowel. Remaining five values, we have vowels. The number of favorable cases are five. The required probability is five by six. Last question is probability that at least one of the letter chosen is M. At least one of the letter chosen is M. So how many cases we have M? So H M one case, O M one case, M E three case. So one two three. In three cases we have the word uh, we have the letter M. So number of favorable cases are three out of the total six. So number of favorable cases are three. Required probability is three by six or one by two. That's it. So this is the complete. Solution of problem number 21.